I'm Eilina Pagan. I'm the water quality specialist at Pinoleville Pomo Nation, and we're going to do a uh, guide to composting uh, at home. Uh, composting can be kind of intimidating at first, not knowing where to start. It's kind of like arriving at an island and not knowing where to go, if I will. Um, but I'll guide you through. Uh, the first question is, what What's the point of composting and what does it do? So, if this will work. I think you can use the arrows. Oh, we're at the very end. That's why. Okay. <coughs> All right. Rewind. Okay. Okay. So, these are some questions that you might have, and we'll answer it by the end of this. Um, so what is composting? What does it do? Uh, we can start off with the basics, which is what do plants do and what do plants need? Uh, plants need water, carbon dioxide, light. This is photosynthesis, which is what plants do. They help us uh, take water, carbon dioxide, and with the use of sunlight, they turn it into sugars and oxygen, which is something we can't do. So we rely on them to get those nutrients. Um, so that's why they're important. And we depend on plants, they, uh, but they also need nutrients, which they get from their roots. Um, and that's why we buy fertilizer. Or if you have a plant at home, you can't just feed it water, because then it would die, because it needs nutrients. So composting offers you the opportunity to recycle nutrients from plants that's already stored in them, and then you can take that, decompose it from your yard waste or your food scraps, and return it back to the plants. Um, composting is also great because it can, like the average household in the US produces about 20 to 30% of their waste could be going into compost instead of landfills. And, but like, one thing that I used as an excuse for a long time for not composting was because, like, why can't I just let it decompose in a land field? Well, the problem is that in a land field, there's no oxygen. It gets matted down, so it can't actually decompose, and it doesn't become compost. Instead, it just produces methane, which is a greenhouse gas, which we know it's, uh, it, like, scrapes away at the ozone layer. Um, and then, instead, you could use compost that you could make at your house to feed plants, which, um, and the compost that you make at your house is like oxygenated because you can turn it around and it'll improve the health of soil. It can, uh, it does a better job of holding water for your plants. And then it also provides a stable pH, which is good for um, fighting off disease and then also fighting off pests. And it's free. <laughs> And um, most importantly, for me, it's easy. So uh, what are some uses that you can use compost with? You can use it in, if you have a flower bed, you can use it for your flower beds. You can use it as mulch, uh, which helps hold in water uh, for droughts. Hint, hint, California. Uh, you can put it around tree roots, if you have any trees. If you have any potted plants, you can just use it as food for the plants. If you have uh, herbs or vegetables that you're growing, it provides a lot of nutrients, so it's great for those. You can use it on a lawn if you grow grass. Or, uh, yeah, that's, I think that's everything. <laughs> and, um, okay, so now we can start talking about how do you compost at home. Uh, what do you need? All you really need is a compost or like a bin and then a composter. And there's different kind of composters, but we went with the tumbler composter, which is what we have outside. So we'll show you that later. And the reason why we did that is because it's off ground. It's faster because you aerate it by tumbling it. And um, it's, yeah, I already said it's faster. It's faster. Um, but also a great, another problem that people often run into at home with composting is rodents. So off-ground compost is good because then it's lifted up so it's harder for them to get to it. Um, and you can, once you have a compost, like a bin, a bag or whatever, you can put it on either under your sink or you can put it in your freezer. If you, you can get like a big uh, Tupperware box. So that way you, don't, you won't have to worry about smell, you won't have to worry about flies. 
and it's usually out of the way. Uh, so what can you put in your composter? You can, uh, uh, like a rule of thumb, is that you want one third green material and two thirds brown material. So green material is seaweed, grass clippings, not glass clippings, uh, vegetables, fruits, coffee grounds, and then brown materials are leaves, newspaper, or like junk mail that you might get, eggshells, tea bags, sawdust, sticks, straw, toilet roll tubes, cereal boxes, and even dryer lint. Uh, yeah, so there's like all these things in your house that you can compost instead of creating methane. And then things that you can't compost are food that you've already cooked or meat or bones. If you keep meat and bones and fish out, you should also not have to worry as much about rodents because that's usually what people wind up forgetting. Like they just toss in some extra meat and then they get visitors. <laughs> so that's, a, that's another way to cut off about worrying about rodents. And then there's uh, dairy products, whole eggs. You can put an eggshell, but not the whole egg. Uh, treated wood, weeds, because then you can wind up growing weeds in your compost. And then human or dog poop, which is pretty easy to, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, but what was I going to say? Um, the reason why you don't put these in is because it'll suffocate your compost. It'll slow it down. Because it's like fat. Fatty things will help uh, like dampen it up, and it won't move as well. Mm -hmm. but, um, you can put lawn clippings, but not weeds. Well, you can um, you can put weeds in, but you don't want to put like uh, really invasive weeds in, weeds that will easily grow within your compost. Yeah, because then you use it in your lawn, and then just wind up spreading weeds. So if you do have like um, yeah, if you that was the difference. I didn't put it in there, but if you have like a super obnoxious weed, then you usually want to keep it out. But you can put um, lawn, yeah, lawn clippings that contain weeds that you're not as worried about. Um, that's about it. All you have to do is take compost that you've collected in your kitchen or in your lawn, you dump it in the tumbler, and then you just spin it five times. And you do this about once a week, because that's about the time it takes to fill up the bin, or however often you fill up the bin. The least that you want to do is spin it at least once a month. Um, and you, once it hits 3 fourths, you stop, because you don't want to fill it all the way. Otherwise, it won't have enough room to decompose. And then um, it'll be ready once it's kind of like dark and crumbly. It'll look like soil, and it should smell earthy. It shouldn't smell bad. Uh, with a tumbler, they say that it can take up to a month. But usually expect like three months, two months, three months. You can buy, um, if you don't want to do the research yourself, we can also give you the information of what tumbler we bought, uh, where we bought it, so that you can like go ahead and do it. But we got one with two sides in it so that you could compost on one side, like wait for it to decompose, and then the other keep adding stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What if you have... Um, like I have vegetables, like they're juicy, mm -hmm. veggies, and then I just throw it in the dirt and turn it over. Now, is, what happens there? So instead of having like a compost yeah. bin, um, it will work. You can do a compost uh, hole. It just takes a lot, a lot longer. Yeah, and you need to put it somewhere. It's different because if you have a composter, um, then you want to put it out somewhere where it's sunny so that it heats up faster. But if you have a compost like pit, then you want to put it somewhere where it gets a little shade and also has access to water, because you want to keep your compost moist. Yeah. So just, uh, and then it's just mostly just waiting. And then you'll also need to like manually kind of stir it around so it doesn't um, mat up. And it just take a longer. Time. Yeah, pretty much all of it is is it just takes a little longer. Mm -hmm. um, I'll walk through some problems people usually run into while composting from home, uh, and then like go through the solutions. So one of the things is that you can have dry compost. During the summer, that's probably an issue on the, over here. And it's really easy. The solution is add water. 
add water and then turn it so that the water spreads evenly through the compost. And the other problem is wet compost, which would currently be a problem. It can get soggy, it can get smelly, and that's because um, it's usually not enough airs in it, uh, too much water, and then not enough nitrogen. So all you have to do is spin it, and <laughs> it's always spinning it is mainly the problem, um, and then add things that are going to, instead of like grass, hay, or unshredded leaves, will just hold in water. And so it starts matting together and getting compact, and that's when it starts getting slushy and like gooey. So what you can do is you can um, add things that aren't gonna mat together, like uh, corn cobs or sawdust, things that won't really like clump together, but rather they'll keep it fluffy. And um, nitrogen-rich things would be like uh, shellfish shells. Or you can just Google it, what's nitrogen-rich, <laughs> and then add that in to try and uh, balance it out. And then bugs and compost can also be a problem. Uh, but they tend to be good for your compost because they're going to break down things faster. So like roly-polies are good, ants are good. Uh, earthworms are good, but because you have a, a spinning tumbler, you don't want to put uh, earthworms in it because those tend to get really hot really fast. They can get up to like 107 degrees, um, and then so they'll die because it's too hot, it moves too much, and it's off ground so they can't escape. Um, but yeah, if you have a stagnant one, like a, um, a pit or one that just stands there, then you can add, people tend to actually buy earthworms and put it in so that uh, they'll help quicken the process. Um, uh, but once you want to use your compost, you don't want all those bugs in because they can like eat at your plants. So what you do is you take it out once it's like dirty, dirty, like dirt. <laughs> um, and you lay it out on a tarp and you put it in the sun so it will dry out. And then eventually the bugs will just leave because it gets uncomfortable. But if you have earwigs and ants, that usually is a sign that your compost is slowing down. It's cooling down. So you, you need to um, spin it around, take care of it, make sure it has enough water, enough nitrogen, and that should even it out again. And then the bugs should leave on their own. Um, and then another one is plants growing in compost. So like a weed growing in compost. But sometimes there's a volunteer, like a tomato, or a melon or something, and if you want it, you can just pick it out and transplant it somewhere in your garden. But if it's a weed, all you have to do is pull it out and toss it back in, and that should take care of it. Uh, bad smell can be a problem. The cause is usually too much nitrogen, or it's too wet, or you've been putting too many uh, kitchen scraps in it that haven't been chopped up or mixed. So. Uh, like for the paper, if anyone's ripping it. The reason why we rip it instead of to tossing the whole thing in is because if it's ripped, it can mix better. So same with vegetables. If you have vegetables in it, you want to chop it up and mix it in. And that's everything. Now you guys are all pros at composting. <laughs> and we can go out and do a demonstration. And then you can... Oh, you see that closer, like, Whoa. over here. Sorry. Got some more here. Got yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, why don't we put that in? Wait, wait. And I bought the little green composting pail at World Market Cost Plus in Santa Rosa for $13.99. This is pretty inexpensive. Mm -hmm. And this just has some kind of a um, filter. And you just stick it in there and empty it. <laughs> so it's just cool. take out the smell? Yeah, oh. but I keep that on my kitchen counter, and I found I should put it under my sink because <laughs> the, the fruit flies do come a little. How much are one of those tumblers? Uh, uh, they can be like seventy dollars, but you can buy cheaper ones too. And you just spin it over five times. <laughs> and then um, this one smells a little, I'm sure you guys can tell. So all you have to do is, um, ideally we would have more, just put the paper on top of sawdust or leaves so it kind of uh, 
like hides the smell, but also shouldn't smell. Um, God is just the best. <laughs> yeah. Insane. So can we come back in 30 days? Yeah. yeah. Check, it <laughs> Check it out. Hopefully there'll be some soil. <coughs> yeah, and then um, once you have the soil in there, all you have to do is scoop it out with a uh, like a garden shovel or anything like that. And you're good. That's everything.